Welcome to another rock and roll road trip. This is kind of a rock and country road trip. And uh, I have the pleasure to be sitting next to what I think is maybe one of the greatest country singers of all time. And he can also sing rock because we've done it together. And uh, the pleasure of sitting in his domain right here where he does most of his writing, probably most of his partying and most of his probably damn near everything you do. I won't get into that, but Mr. Ronnie Dunn in the house. Say it, Sammy. Call it. Thank you. How are hey, you, sir? That's, that's awful nice of you to say. Well. Uh, welcome to the doghouse. <laughs> this is a mighty is. expensive looking doghouse now. You know, it was, it was a 16 horse uh, uh, stable. It built like in the 40s when we bought the property, and uh, there were no, no ends on uh, either end back here, and it was a hayloft, and that's where we're sitting now. I should have been a country artist. <laughs> you, you are, and you are. <laughs> I, I, should have, I wish I had been a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done shows together. I think the last time I saw you was uh, on the Oklahoma yeah. Stadium show where you just sent me a picture of, of us uh, hanging around backstage a little bit. How's your songwriting evolved over the years? Like, how, how do you figure your first early songs compared to the way you write now? Are you getting any block? One day I sat down uh, and said, you know, if I'm really gonna get serious about this, and I was in Oklahoma before I came to Nashville, I said, I'm gonna really have to go at this seriously. So I sat down and I had a, a, a big dinner table in, in front of a window at, at the lake, a Grand Lake in Oklahoma. And I remember having stacks of uh, typing paper out, and I would scribble all these song ideas. And I can't remember, like, Neon Moon, Boot Scoop Boogie, Hard Working Man, She Used to Be Mine. There, was, there were five or six of them. They all became number one songs. Wow, and you well, after we got together. Once? Yes, not, not, not all in, in one day, but over, but, the, over the, the, a period of about it, two weeks, they were all just scattered everywhere all over that wow. table. So how the yeah. hell did you get so serious? What caused you to get and what do you call I think I just serious? stopped and focused. I think yeah. I just stopped and get okay, get get real. Do you and do you enjoy being a solo artist to where you just feel like you don't have to t explain nothing to nobody or, or do you enjoy having a partner to bounce off of? I enjoy having a partner to bounce off of. Yeah. You know, I I'm, I'm I'm the introvert in a big way in 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 that scenario. So having somebody to bounce off is man, that's a that's a God gift, you yeah, know, especially is. if they cover a certain base for you. Yeah, and, you're and I here, understand you guys. You well know. That. Yeah, you're out there hanging out, hanging ten, you know, by yourself. Yeah. It's like, wait a minute, you know, I have to sing and do the talking. Yeah, and do, and do the radio say, yeah. and do and the and photos. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the and the yeah, and the meet and greet and oh uh, yeah. Woo yeah. yeah. So, um, what what do you want to do next in your life? Are you 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 and you guys are back together. Like you, well, yeah, you the, broke the, up the tour yeah. it was fun. We had, a, we had a bunch of things happen. You know, cool things happened last year. We, we, we they snuck us into the, the Hall of Fame, uh, and uh, we had a record come out. This reboot with a bunch of new country artists yeah. that happened. So, is there anybody that on that record that you would have liked to have worked with that you didn't get to work with? Didn't get to. Me? Yeah, looking ahead, like yeah, is there you somebody you? No, I mean there, there was there was a that was a good group. Of, of young up and comers that, that I, I was really really impressed. You know, I love what Casey Musgraves did with uh, Neon Moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah she's was, she's great singer. Yeah, more, but more, more progressive stuff like that. Yeah. She was she was good. And Luke Combs, uh, you know, I think like he's an upcoming new kid. He's like a big two, I superstar love in country now. Right? I love Luke, man. Yeah. Come on, ice cold, tall, cool. I could have never broke my heart. I mean, if that ain't one of the greatest country lines yeah. ever. How, how have you seen the changes in country music? It's, I, mean, I see it changing, but mm. you must really see it. How do you feel about all the changing? Where is it going? Do you like where it's going? Do you prefer the old style? What, what's you know, going on in country music here? That, it's generational. I mean, it's, it's, in, it's in, in each generation, you know, they, they, they listen to, to different music, and it's a different culture. Uh, and it is in, in, in your genre, too. You know, so I was listening to to the Eagles. That was a country band to me back yeah, in college. Was, I was thinking, yeah, man, abs absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> if Seeger and, and the Eagles were c coming out today. They'd yeah, be, they'd be. Seeger, I was listening country. to him the other day. I mean, I, I, and I cut against the wind on some stuff, but yeah. he's a he's a country writer. What do you call success? I mean, you've had enough success for for five artists. So, what what do you makes you feel like it's success? Success is, I mean, it, it to me it was like, you know, st staying married, keeping a family together. You know, oh. my kids, oh. my kids, you know, right. I'm, oh, that's so good. You know, I'm, I'm, I just say this forever. You know, my kids raised me. 
You know, I look at them and go, they're, they're great. I, you know, I have a son in California, in yeah. Sacramento, that, that's a school teacher, just got his master's and is working on his PhD. It's like, holy cow. Wow. You know? Well, that's good. You want to play a song? Yeah. And Kix is coming by, right? Oh, I'm going to have to go hide all the expensive silverware. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sammy Hagar here. Welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. We are back now, and now we don't only have just Ronnie Dunn, we have Kix Brooks in the house. Kix. Thanks. We know each other a little bit. A little bit. We've run into each other a couple yeah, of times. We've, we've avoided a couple of fights. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Yeah, don't get... <laughs> I, like our, I like our chances. We're nice guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so funny because, you know, I did some shows with you guys in, in stadium shows where you guys... Uh, I was the rock, the rock guy, the token rock guy on the shows, and uh, so got to hang out a little bit. I don't know if you guys remember, but what I did once was, I think it was in Arizona, but there was a curtain and it had, um, your dressing room was right there, and I looked in your dressing room because I want to say hi to y'all before I'd ever met you, and you guys had a bottle of tequila sitting on there. Well, and, that's why we don't remember a lot. Well, <laughs> you probably don't remember this, but it was probably the best tequila you ever had. I took that tequila out and I put my own, when I, that's when I still own Cobble Wobble, and I put a bottle of Cobble Wobble in there. And, and, and I think I, what I heard is that there was some noise about, hey, man, this ain't what we drink. <laughs> but you probably no. got used to it. I mean, once you had good tequila, you can't go back. I think we still have it. <laughs> <laughs> the bottle. I yeah. might have signed it. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, tell me something about this fellow that nobody else knows. He's a really good family man and a grandpa. He would help me, hate me saying that probably because he likes to think of himself as a 20-year-old. But well, don't he's, we got, all? <laughs> he's got grandkids. I don't. But it, it really, it, it, you know, it changes your uh, perspective even as long as we've been together to watch him talk about his grandkids and to hang out with him and whatever. It's, it's a big part of his world. And that makes me, that makes me feel uh, probably better than I did before. <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah, he's 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 got some normalcy to yeah, him. You know? He's not so poisoned. Yeah. <laughs> well, being a duo is tough. It's like being being married. I mean, you guys spend more time together probably than you do with your wives when you're in, in the heyday of, of going do. out on tour. You do, you do, and you give up a lot too. Yeah. You know, we talk about it all the time. You give up, you give up certain things. You have to, you have to learn to obviously like a marriage compromise, and that's we don't, you know, it's it's a what, challenge. What, yeah. What's what's the biggest fight you guys ever got in, and then about what? <laughs> it's usually about it's usually about music trying to make an album, but the truth this is the honest to God truth we have in thirty years of working together we have never raised our voices at each other. True. Wow. That's yeah. true. So no, wow. we shut up grown we, men. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I think we shut up to the to the to the dance of grown men and it just you realize hey we're lucky to be here you know let's don't rock the ship and if you, you got to push it that hard. It's not worth pushing. When you were growing up, what, what were you listening to? Were you like a country guy out of the box, or would you go through different you know, music? You know, I grew up literally about three blocks from Hank Williams' widow, Billie Jean, and she was married to Johnny Horton uh, after Hank oh, died. Oh, wow. And their daughter was my age. So my first gig was when I was 12 years old was actually in their driveway. Well, that's great, but I, I didn't ask you what you grew up on. I mean, you, you moved around a little bit. Were you ever into rock or into folk music? Well, well my dad was a wannabe <clears throat> country singer. Had a, had a radio show in Abilene, oh, Texas, are, when I was growing up. So it, I, it was always in the house, you know. Love has, mine. I mean, yeah. The, I mean, the most prized possession of our, of our family was was my dad's Martin guitar, D28. But I remember him for real, Sammy. In Midland, Texas, there was a tornado on the ground. He had the family in the car. He parked in the highway. Got one one of his buddies was with us. And took off to go to the house to get that toward the tornado to get that guitar. Oh man, yeah, okay. You know, well, I didn't. Not to save his mother and kids, get that guitar. <laughs> I didn't realize that's great. It's well, what funny a with all that country. Not to interrupt you though, with yeah. all that country though, we both found a real common bond when we got into high school and started getting into college. It, we were we were both yeah. into into rock stuff, and he yeah, was in yeah, Tulsa. Yeah. We were both big Leon Russell big fans. When I heard Allman yeah. Brothers at Fillmore, I went, "Holy crap! Are we you all shitting did. me? Yeah. Those guys can play!" And then all of a sudden, that's that's what I wanted to do, wanted to be. I mean, what's the most difficult thing to you about having a a duet partner, not just being a solo artist, you know, like you what just... Ronnie said, compromise. Yeah. We had both. We I was 36, he was 38 when we met. 
You know, we were grown men. Yeah, I mean, nobody. Oh, kind of. Kind who, of. Who almost. starts? A, who starts a twenty-year run when you're almost forty <laughs> years old? It just what? It didn't make any sense. Well, two know? grown men that are fixated yeah. in age at nineteen. It is. Yeah. We're and nineteen years old. We both had yeah. our own bands. We've done our own yeah. things for for a long time. So uh. all of a sudden, we're both going, "Who are you?" and we screwed up and wrote our first two number ones the week we met. You guys are doing pretty good, and I'm kind of having a little hard time with my career now. I was thinking about, you know, about Brooks, Dunn, and Hagar, but we'll get into that later. Uh, I think Libra will good. straighten you guys out. No, I can keep you guys together for another 10 years. I like this. Brooks and Dunn got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Worse because we've got a hell of a guitar player. <laughs> I'm afraid Brooks and Dunn might be done if you had me. Okay, so this or that. Vegas residency or on the road? I think the fantasy's on the road, you know, but man, the, the quality of sound and everything else is in Vegas. Country or rock? That's a stupid question, but hey, I'm stupid. <clears throat> Country with a kick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we both really respect it, but when you get on stage, I think we both got a rock bone. How about uh, tequila or mezcal? No. That's your question. Sore subject. Sore subject. Well, we'll get into we'll, that. Uh, okay. I owe you. I'll stay away from it. Uh, uh, tequila. Oh, good. Yeah. Simon and Garfunkel or Hall and Oates? Oh, man, too. Yeah. <sighs> See? Uh, See? Paul Simon just wrote some brilliant freaking songs. I can't just pound for pound songwriting. You could put him up against him. Yeah, I mean. That bass line with the hollow. Oh, yeah. That's it. And those guys. Uh, I mean, that's. I don't know. It's hung in there. I mean. Sarah, a, smile. Yeah. Abandoned yeah. Luncheonette. It's just one of the first albums I went, God, this is so freaking cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've worn them both out. Okay. I'll that's make a hard a, question. It's an easier one. The Hager Twins or The Judge? Or the Judds. I love those guys. <laughs> Me too. They, they kind of have my damn name. I love those they guys. They kind of have my damn name. I had to throw it in there. You don't know how many Do times. Do we need to answer that? They were so cool. growing up, it was like, uh, oh, Sammy Hager, man. <laughs> no, uh, Hagar. Hey, I'm I rode the airport plane with those guys one time, and they had the whole freaking plane in stitches. They were just hysterical. Oh, man. And they had an airport car that was the, like this beat up Pinto or something. And those two guys <laughs> in that car leaving the airport, I'm like, that is so good. Okay, Brooks are done. Well, Brooks, of course. <laughs> That's me something hard. <laughs> okay. Hey, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm choking. Ain't no rock guys can play that shit either. <laughs> Watch this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll sing it first. Yeah. I'll sing it first, first. Yeah. Well, hey, pretty thing, let me tell you, I was raised on the rolling stones. I cut my teeth on Led Zeppelin, Billy Gibbon song. I learned to play the blues in Memphis. I fight the Texas balls. I did a little time in Oklahoma for hot wiring cars. Well, I'm a rock and roll. And Chevrolet, but I'll be good to you. Huh, huh. Woo. Yeah, you got a second. I'll get it. Watch this. I ain't gonna look. No. Hey, pretty thing, I guess you heard. I rolled a Mustang 429, running from the law in Kansas City. <laughs> the car wasn't mine. No, I'm rough around the edges And I don't do debutante There it is Honey, you got the juice You got the junk To get any man you want Well, there's a rocker on the road Like Tom Joe Ass calling a 442 Well, I'm bad on Fords and Chevrolet But I'll be good to you Hey, kicks in the house
this first. Not bad. Is it another verse? Yeah, watch this. That was a badass solo. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. We're going to probably see you next week at some time, but in the meantime, we got another verse. Hey, pretty thing, let me show you my L.A.E. tattoo. If we ever get out to the city of angels, I buy you one too. And then what happens? Bye bye. See you next week. Ah, this my favorite part. Another rock and roll over the- I promise you it won't be this good. <laughs>